What's up, cryptids and corvids? I'm odd, by the way. So I had an idea to draw something with a kind of like an isometric perspective. And you probably don't know this about me, or you do if you've seen a lot of my art. I am not a backgrounds person. I just, I, I've been getting better at it, but the thing is, is that it's, it's difficult to focus on a background and then a character at the same time. And I'm the type of person that typically likes to have character-based interactions and it feels like the skills that I have for creating backgrounds and the skills that I have for creating characters are a little separated so I'll wind up drawing a character and kind of slapping a background on something and it doesn't look like it fits you know or spend all this time on a background and then I'll put in a character and the styles just don't seem to mix stuff like that so I, I really want to find a sort of style outside of my comfort zone when it comes to drawing backgrounds and I thought that it would be a lot of fun to try and draw like an isometric sort of three quarters perspective like you see on the screen here. A little less boring. I kind of just mapped everything out. Initially I actually kind of like, I summoned this cube from CSP, right? And I, and I basically used it to create a guide that I could draw with. And you can see that it started out like as just this cube and I drew everything kind of inside and these are perspective guidelines that let me kind of keep up with what direction that I'm supposed to go. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this exact angle for every single one of them, but uh, I mean I could, but it definitely won't be this exact box. So my hope today is to learn a little bit about environmental storytelling and stuff like that and really just try to bring home something sans character. So, obviously the background might be associated with a certain character, like, you see a room and you're gonna think, oh, it's, it, there's as much about an implied human character here, or any other character, it depends, I guess, on your setting. And the point is, of that background then, is to make sure that you elicit the feeling of the character that belongs in that room without necessarily drawing the character itself. So I think that that's interesting. And it's definitely something that I want to get better at. <laughs> so I figured that I would push myself via, you know, the excuse of recording something and do the thing. One of the things that I was having trouble with was trying to find like a good setting or theme uh, because typically I do more than one of these sort of things, right? Per video and I had no ideas. I've been kind of sitting here these past couple of days just completely spaced out and unable to come up with anything or unable to decide on anything. You get those like ADHD moments where you're sitting there like, oh, I could do this or this or this or this, and then you don't do anything. So in order to create uh, a nice theme for each of my little projects that I want to make here, I think I'm going to do three. We are going to be using a website <laughs> that is possibly one of my favorite things about the internet, which is that you can type in random noun <laughs> generator and get anything. You could probably just type in random noun generator word for word and you would get a generator that generated random nouns. <laughs> like, so many people have made these, like, these, these word generators that just kind of have a cache of random words that they smash together. And so I found this one that I thought was interesting. It is a theme and setting generator and it's from Let's Make a Game, but the concept of writing or making a game and writing and making an illustration are about the same. You're trying to portray a story kind of a certain limited way. I mean, that's to be said about like literally anything art-wise. <laughs> uh, overall, you're just trying to create a, a invoke a fe invoke a feeling, invoke a story. I mean, games are basically kind of like the, the convergence of all of like the aspects of art. You got writing, you got drawing, or modeling, or any other sort of visual medium, right? Uh, music, coding could definitely be an art form, you know? I'm excited to see what I get out of this. I think I'm gonna go for like a couple of, a couple of roles on this. Uh, one time I got, what was it? It was like the theme was isolation and the setting was mythology and obviously this one is treasure hunt setting modern day. And you can see like how these could be kind of combined together to create a lot of different concepts either for a story or for an illustration. So that being said, let's see what we get. Temptation Ancient Room. Let's go for three. Family drama post-apocalypse. Okay. 
Okay, interesting. So I'm thinking like this. I'm gonna write these down on physical paper. I don't know. I'll play with it. I'll play with it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not great with it at the moment, but I feel like I see something like a teenager's room, um, or the scene outside, maybe with some like kids' toys or something like that. <laughs> Did you mean The Last of Us? Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Two, three. Comedy. Folks, oh, I don't want another post-apocalypse. Patriotism. Distant future. Ooh. Um, natural disaster. I don't want post-apocalypse again. God damn it. Natural disaster zombie. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, <laughs> I could see like, a bunch of zombies getting sucked up into a tornado. Oh my god. Individual versus society Lovecraftian? No. No. Search for identity, distant future. Well, that sounds cool. I might pick a few more and then pick three out of whatever I get because I don't know if I like the natural disaster plus zombie. Revenge plus antiquity. When was antiquity? I'll have to look that up. That seems like like Ides of March stuff, but it's probably- is it not- it's not that long ago, right? I've heard it's longer. I don't remember. Ancient path, specifically the period before the Middle Ages. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Let's go for a few more. I saw that scene funk there. Rich versus poor mythology. Battle of Wits Western. Isn't that just most Westerns? <laughs> Do something with that. Okay, so I'm going to choose three of these six in my own time. I'm going to draw them and I want you guys to guess, I'll obviously reveal them at the end, but like, you know, guess in the comments or guess amongst your, your own thought what exactly I have drawn. Does that sound like a fun idea? I think that sounds like a fun idea. Okay, I'm creating a video as I go. Let's do it. So, another recap for all of those possible combinations I selected. One, family drama and post-apocalypse. Two, natural disaster and zombie. Three, search for identity and distant future. Four, revenge and antiquity. 5. Rich vs. Poor in Mythology, and 6. Battle of Wits and Western. I chose 3 out of the 6 for my pieces. So, if you feel so inclined, you can write your guess with a timestamp in the comments and see how close you got later. I think that I, uh, I said I wouldn't be using the guides from the first isometric box the whole time, but uh, I, I used them the whole time. Perfective is hard, okay? <laughs> I tried my best to keep with totally different themes though. For the first one, I went for a cutout piece of landscape. Drawing a grid was particularly hard, so I employed the guides again. Going kind of for a familiar layout here, you might recognize. I almost feel like I kind of cheated because I basically included characters too. My goal was to focus on the environmental stuff, but I had this in mind from the second I saw the prompt, and there is still quite a bit of, like, what's, what's the word? Atmosphere here, you know? And beside that, it's the only one that's really like this, I swear. <laughs> Lots of funky shapes to the background, so I went for this kind of flat or silhouette look. It's kind of like a stage background, like how they're, you know, obviously not like 3D pieces, right? And okay, it's a chessboard. The sketch is probably getting somewhat discernible from here, so you have one last chance to guess. It's Battle of Wits plus Western. This is probably the most fantastical of the group. There are a lot of buried chess pieces everywhere, and the knights are in this endless battle, kind of looping around each other in that weird little L shape they do. I considered an entire 8x8 board, but the tiles got so small, so I just did a little 4x4 corner. I still tried to put the knights in a somewhat correct position, though. I play a little bit of chess. Not a lot, but I played some. I looked up a palette for this one, and again, this was the only time that I did this, okay? But I did tweak the original colors a little bit to give it a little bit more red. I wanted a kind of a sunset or desert vibe. Uh, after adding some interest to the lines, we move on to our next piece. I don't totally know why, but I had trouble working on this one initially. So I think that with the cluttered room idea that I wanted to put into it, I just got like burnt out from so many little sketchy things. It's not my typical ordeal, so it was something uh, that I wasn't very used to. This is definitely a bit more of the classic room style isometric that I feel like I'm used to, which is a little cutout of an empty space with clues left behind as to who lives there. I think this one is a little bit more difficult to guess, but I hope I was able to get the feeling right. You can kind of see stuff everywhere, from coffee mugs to files. There's kind of a, a strange vibe going on with the floor, which leaves me to say, leave your final guesses at this timestamp. It's search for identity and distant future. <laughs> uh, I kind of wanted the darkened room complete with a more digital yarn and corkboard set up in the background. So sort of like this like conspiracy board where the person is actually searching 
for their identity. I had the, the concept in mind was more like this person has lost their memory or lost some portion of their life and is trying to get it back. I don't know if that's totally what was meant by search by, for identity. I guess it could go either way. It could either be like trying to figure yourself out or trying to figure out who you were. And yeah, it's hard to tell with everything so sped up, but this one was pretty challenging. I'm not very great at futurism and like, I probably could have looked some stuff up, but I wanted this to be relatively quick and, and not, you know, like focus too much on like little individual details. So when it comes to like making futuristic stuff, it's you know hard to obviously design something that you've never seen before. I did like the little like growing like plant growing plus like microwave heating system that I decided to add in the corner there. I think that that's fairly interesting. And now time for our final piece, which I initially had some trouble with. Uh, if you recognize what I'm making here, you've probably already got it. <clears throat> this one strays a little bit further from the intended theme, but I tried my best to allude to it however I could. As I kind of add in the details, I feel like this one is only going to get more and more obvious from the leftover options alone, so leave your final guesses before the sketch finishes up, and it's rich versus poor in mythology! I feel like it's pretty common to think of Greek when mythology comes up, and maybe I could have tried to make it another mythos, but honestly, this was like the only thing that came to mind when I saw this. And yeah, it just reminded- it reminded me specifically Honestly, in its full extent of the tale of like the Minotaur and like this, the sacrifices that are kind of led into there, they're like either prisoners or virgins, but regardless, they're just kind of normal people, right? And they're being led there by the, the word of this, this king, who's a rich person. These random people are just kind of led into this initial entry room that's just lined with gold and it's all indulgent and there's fruits everywhere, but they're kind of this like background feeling of like okay there's something going on here and then <laughs> tried my best to do little like pots and like a like a little golden decanter it probably wasn't actually right when it comes to archaeological styles like i said i didn't look up a lot for this um but i tried my best with a kind of like uh geometric bowl designs and stuff like that i'm actually pretty proud of that fairly simplistic like bowl head line work thing. I think that that turned out really fun. But yeah, the room is supposed to be opulent, but then leading into this sort of dank underworld and the maze beyond it. So the room is what the rich king had made, King Minos, and the dark maze is made for the minotaur and by extension the poor sacrifices. So you kind of, it's more symbolic in this case when it comes to the whole rich versus poor mythology. I initially had an idea of maybe having like the maze be divided in two, I think, and have it be like, oh, there's rich people over here, there's poor people over here, but everybody's dead. <laughs> and then, like, the more that I tried to do that, I just couldn't really get a good detail, like, obviously inside of the isometric maze. So I kind of scrapped that and went for something like this. There's also what's left of a person being dragged off in one corner, just their hand. The proportions might be way off. It feels like the hand is pretty big in comparison to like the walls and the furniture and stuff but I wanted to make sure that it was visible and like actively you know being dragged away this is definitely the most gory of the three yeah at that I think that's basically all three of my attempts at isometric drawing these little storytelling attempts and yeah I think I had a lot of fun with it what do you think about them I, I think that I was able to at least somewhat in my own mind really explore the themes that were given to me. Now, of course, it's all dependent on like how you view those sort of things, you know? I guess if they could have been anything else would be would it be an interesting thing to, to talk about. But I mean, off the top of my head, they're just basically what I came up with when given these prompts, right? I also wound up accidentally making these basically the same color palette or at least having them have the same contrasting bits. Uh, it wasn't intentional, but I really liked the kind of blue and orange dynamic, okay? Like, <laughs> that being said, I really left my comfort zone when it comes to, um, if not the exact colors I use, 
but more to do with the, the, the saturation of the colors. I, I tend to go for fairly natural looking backgrounds, so when using like the really bright choices, uh, it was something that I hadn't really done before, and to get like a feeling of something actually existing, but also having, uh, I guess, an obvious color scheme to it was uh, interesting. And yeah, the, even like especially the first one where it's just all like reds and blues and stuff, and I had a kind of limited palette. It took a long time for me to like get used to and register with my eyes and be like, is that too bright? Is that is that too much? But I think that it turned out okay, and it looks fairly nice uh, off of my tablet as well, which is which is good. My tablet is very saturated in color, as opposed to I suppose like my old my old laptop screen, which was just so not saturated. But yeah. At uh, that, I want to thank you for watching and indulging in my little game if you did. I'm curious if anyone initially guessed something different from the list, uh, although I feel like these were kind of obvious after a certain degree. Uh, there weren't really a lot of like repeats or similar themes beyond the like two apocalypse ones, right? So I'll be back around again actually pretty soon. I've got some, I've got some more ideas that I want to play with. So until then, I will see y'all next time.